Hi, I'm Shannon Thresher, and this is 30 Second Tactics. Today, we're going to talk about body cameras. Uh, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad. Um, most of this is going to be addressed to those guys on departments that haven't yet adopted the body camera and consider, considering uh, getting them and, and getting a policy on them. Um, but if you've been running body cameras for years, there's still some good stuff in here for you to consider, so stay tuned. Uh, hang out to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. So first thing, pro side. First biggest one's going to be, uh, you know, the court system, uh, testimony, evidence. Uh, some of you guys have been around a while, you'll remember when uh, dash cams first became popular and how uh, DUIs and other things became a lot easier to prosecute, a lot easier to get convictions because it, you could, you wouldn't have to convince a jury of what was going on in the dark at 2 a.m., you know, six weeks ago. You could just show them a video and, you know, testify to that and they could see it with their own eyes. Same thing with the, the body cameras now. Uh, a lot of the public is just unaware, just totally blind to what you know officers deal with every day, and it, it's a great way to, you know, bring it in the courtroom and show them exactly what was going on, you know, in addition to your actual testimony. Uh, another another good thing is is officer safety. Um, now it's not you know having a camera is not going to guarantee that all your suspects are going to act right, obviously, but there is some percentage, and that's going to vary, of uh, bad guys, if you will. They're going to be like, mm, well, you know, I was going to do this, but since I can see that camera beeping on his chest and I know everything I do is going to be recorded and they already got a good picture of me and stuff, I'm just going to act right. So there's some level of, of officer safety involved in it. Uh, another big thing, of course, is complaints. Uh, it will vary by department. It will vary by uh, the society and the community you work in. But your unfounded complaints are going to drop off really quick as the citizens realize that you're taping the incidents and they can't just call in and say anything they think of and make up lies. Um, when we uh, had just got the cameras on my department, uh, I witnessed a conversation that basically went like this. Um, a woman had called in to complain on one of the officers. A uh, supervisor took the call. The call kind of went like this. Okay, uh, well, I'm going to review the video of the officer's incident and then I'll call you back and then the lady's like oh well there's a video never mind click because everything she said was a lie and she knew she was about to get caught um, unfortunately and of course that's not all or even a, a significant percentage of society but unfortunately there's a there's a part of society that wants to be right all the time wants to blame everyone else and wants to lie on the police every day so that's a good way to defend against that um, and also, you know, it helps for legitimate complaints because, you know, nobody hates a bad cop more than a good cop. So if we got some, you know, uh, bad apple, if you will, out there doing bad things, you know, we want the citizens to make us aware of that. And we want to have the evidence on that video to uh, square that guy away, either pull him out, retrain him, suspend him, fire him, whatever the case may be, put him in jail. Just depends on the circumstance. Uh, and that kind of lends into another good point, which is uh, I just like to call self-control. You know, the citizens might act a little better because they know they're being videotaped. And the officers might act a little better because they know they're being videotaped. They might, uh, you know, save that last little sarcastic remark or, uh, you know, save that last little cuss word that they shouldn't be saying. Uh, they might be a little less physical, you know, if they don't need to be. I'm not saying they should restrain themselves from any legal uh, action just because they're being videotaped. That's the whole point. But again, it's kind of like having another officer or supervisor standing next to you. You might just have that one little extra, you know, split second to say, okay, I don't need to do that. That's not going to look good. That's not going to sound good. That's not professional. That's not me. Because um, we're all human and, and we need that little reminder. And carrying that reminder around on your chest is, you know, a, a good way to help with that. So um, before I go to the cons, I'm going to talk real quick about the fact that I'm not going to talk about uh, make and model of cameras. Um, there's bunches of them out there. There's, of course, two or three that are the top that most departments are running. But they all basically do the same thing, and that is they all mount on the front of your uniform, they all record audio and video, and they all store that for later use for, you know, evidence. Um, so make and model, you guys decide, is going to be on, on you for, you know, all your considerations. I'm not here to review the cameras. I'm here to talk about, you know, the general use of them and the policies. So uh, on the con side, the biggest thing is going to be cost. Um, the The cost is going to be the cost regardless of the size of your apartment because if you're a 10-man department with a tiny budget, the cameras are going to seem really expensive. And if you're a huge 10,000-man department, then 
the cost is going to seem huge because you have to buy several thousand cameras. Um, but the biggest cost is not actually the cameras, the hardware and all that, uh, the docking stations for downloading and all that. The biggest cost is going to be storage of those videos. Um, and depending on you know the activity level and the number of officers you have, you could be storing tens of thousands of hours of video per month. And that cost can add up quick. So that's something you need to consider and look into uh, when you're getting that. And then lastly, before I get out of your way, um, and this isn't a pro or a con, it's just a fact. Um, you need to have a good written policy uh, regarding your body cameras. Um, and in my opinion, one of the most important things in the policy, of course, is going to be when is the officer required to turn the camera on, you know, record, and when is he allowed to turn the camera off or stop recording. Uh, and I think that's important. I think it needs to be clear for the officers. As the officers, you guys need to know your policy, get your copy, read it front and back, memorize it. But as the department, I think it's important that that policy uh, not be carved in stone, black and white. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you have a policy or part of your policy says videos can never be erased uh, for whatever, say 30 days or, you know, whatever the, the number is. Uh, and then you have an officer that accidentally forgets his cameras on and goes and uses the restroom. That's a legitimate reason to go to your boss and say, I need this, this particular clip erased, right? but don't have a policy where you're breaking your policy or breaking the law when you do that, right? Um, if you have a policy that says the camera needs to be recording when you're dealing with the public, that makes sense. But if it says, or else, you know, if you don't, you're going to be fired or suspended, no questions asked kind of thing. If it's black and white like that, then you don't take into consideration things like under stress, the officer jumped out and he hit the camera and thought he turned it on, but he didn't. And then, you know, 10 minutes later when the stress is over and the situation is under control, he realizes he wasn't recording. You know, does that guy need to be suspended or fired? I would say no. I think you need some gray area in your policy on that. Same thing with if he turns it on and he ends up tussling with somebody and it gets uh, turned off or it gets knocked off his body and it's facing down. So you have three quarters of the incidents not on video. Is that on the officer? Is the policy written in a way to understand that? So that's all I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, don't want to bore you guys to death. If you enjoy these videos, I really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, put some comments down there. That really helps the algorithms. Uh, push this out to more people on YouTube. Um, hit the like button. Share them. Feel free to use these videos as training videos or uh, roll call videos. Uh, as always, uh, if you have any ideas for other topics or videos, just put them down in the comments. I'll be glad to consider them. And if it's a good idea, we'll make a video on it. Uh, so, like I always in them, guys, uh, I just want to tell you, work, train, repeat, stay safe.